It is showroom stock racing at its very best. The Magna Enduro Series here on TSN. Welcome to Trois-Rivières, the fairgrounds round the Hippodrome and round five of the Magna Enduro Series. Vic Rotor along with John Powell. Vic, it's not an Enduro Series, but it is here. 66 laps is more than a sprint and a mandatory 60 seconds must be spent in the pits during a green flag racing. There's racing in three classes. Let's begin in Grand Sport. First race, Mosport in May. Peter Lockhart, Nick Morant, the winner in their BMW M5. Next is Montreal. This is Formula One, and this is the big time. Stefan Bayeux in the Daikon Porsche. One in the Porsche 968. In Toronto at the Molson Indy. Richard Spinar, a late entry in his Porsche 944. Started at the back of the field, came all the way through to pick up the checkered flag in his first ride of the season. Mont Tremblant, July, and it was Peter Cohen and Martin Guimont teamed up to win in the rain in the GM Goodwrench Camaro. So after four races, Veilleux, your leader, Rolf von Engelbrecken and Terry McDonald Cadieux, second and third, followed by Peter Cohen and Paul Duckworth. In sport class, we've seen Benoit Teague dominate, winning the first three races in his Honda, but Jocelyn Hebert won a Trombla on his Eagle Talon. Teague remains with a comfortable lead. Last year's winner was John Shirk. He's in third, followed by David White and Reynald Amelet from Trois-Rivières. In touring class, so far, the wins have been split between the two Nissan teams. Robert and Norman Boyer posted wins at most port in Montreal, but Barb Armstrong took the checkered flag in Toronto and Mont Tremblant. Volkswagen, Honda, Chrysler have all made it to the podium as well. So after four races, it is Bob Armstrong in his Nissan, the leader by 10 points, over Ron Guidelin in his VW, followed by the Nissans of Boyer and Thornley in a Honda. And so now as they head into the fifth event of the season here at Trois-Rivières, 26 cars are on the starting grid in the three different classes. And a classic duel shaping up. We've got Porsche on pole and BMW beside it. On the pole, it is Stéphane Veilleux. He was the winner in Montreal. Yeah, I need to drive, uh, you know, smooth to uh, keep the car in, in the track and... Uh... And like today, we won, I think we have the pole for the race, so we have five points, and uh, that's a more point for the championship, so uh, that's a good thing. Alongside the BMW M5, Peter Lockhart, co-driven with Nick Moran, he says Trois-Rivières can be tough. This year at Trois-Rivières, it's the race is an hour and a half long. It uh, has been in the past a one-hour race. That's going to make a big difference to the strategy of a lot of teams here because uh, this is a very tough circuit on the equipment. Uh, if you've been on the circuit here for uh, half an hour, you think you've been on uh, the circuit for two hours because it's very busy. Richard Spinar starts inside row two, a numerous champion in different series in this country, now makes his home in Florida, returns for three races in the Magna Series. Right now, doing the Magna Series, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. It's becoming a lot better. The competition is very interesting, and it's enjoyable for me to drive in it. So um, if we choose and pick the short race, which is the one I like to do, um, and we go to RDVM Montreal and Toronto, these are good venues. So it's been interesting. Another veteran of Canadian motor racing is Jeff Lapsovich from Hamilton, Ontario. He'll start outside row two in his Camaro. Inside row three. Scott Maxwell in his zero Ford Mustang. Maxwell has tasted Trans Am this year. And then we have the first invader. It's Stuart Jones from Massachusetts in a 92 Camaro, co-driven with John Heinrichsee. Heinrichsee is a development engineer from General Motors responsible for the new C5 Corvette. And those are your top six in Grand Sport, while your top qualifier in Sport Class Jocelyn A. Bear, he will start 10th overall, currently second in points behind Benoit Peach. While your top touring qualifiers, well, they're the Boyer brothers. Robert will start his NX2000 Nissan, 15th overall. Normal will take over the driving a little later as the field of 26 heads out here on what Peter Lockhart says is a very tough track. A tough track, a very hot day, and tough competition. 
The Magna Enduro Series on TSN is presented in part by Speedy Auto Glass, over 160 locations across Canada. At Speedy, we care. By iTech, clearly the best protection in sight. By STP Engine Treatment, helps protect against engine wear, start after start after start. And by Mini Disc from Sony, the smaller recordable compact disc. The green flag when we come back. You may remember Greg Wilkins' crash at Mosport earlier this season. Well, the team needed a new windshield, and it's Camaro. So where did they go? Well, Speedy Autoglass, of course. Now, we tend to take windshields for granted, John, but installing a new one isn't quite so easy. You're right, Vic. The procedure starts with a very thorough cleaning. You see, windshields are bonded now. They're not just set in a gasket. So you have to remove all the old urethane seal and any dirt or glass shards. This allows the urethane, when it's applied to adhere to a very strong base. So the next step after the glass has been taken out and the body has been scraped down to clean up the pitch weld, as it's called, what do you do at this point? Well, you spray the body with just straight air to clean that pitch weld off. The next step is to take a urethane primer, a rust-preventative primer, and you put that to take care of all the scratches that may have been put on the body, trying to stay away from the actual old urethane bed. Once he puts the scratches on, the next step is to let it dry and install the glass. Now you spray the glass with cleaner. It'll take off any oil marks, finger marks, dirt, grease that may be on. Then once everything is nice and clean, a primer is then applied and it also is taken off and it etches the edge of the glass. That's right, Vic, around the black band, around the uh, edge of the windshield, that black band actually is there to stop the ultraviolet uh, light from damaging the seal. That primer etches the glass so that everything will bond to the glass. In most applications, they're going to put a molding on now that attaches to the glass, bonds to it, then they'll put some sealer, urethane sealer, on the metal of the car, and then, of course, lay the whole windshield in. Here you see them applying that molding to the glass on the etched portion. This molding is OEM, which means Original Equipment Manufacturer's Specification, which means that Speedy are gonna put a car just like it came out of the factory. Now this urethane bead is applied to the bodywork. What's this for? Well, that's the final bonding because they're going to drop the whole windshield on top of this when it's completely prepared. And the idea is about three-eighths of an inch to half an inch in thickness. And of course, all this preparation, see they've got suction cups so they don't drop that glass and they lay it in like that. And boy, 30, 40 minutes later, Greg can fire that sucker up and go on the racetrack. No, that windshield isn't going to leak. And you know, 30 to 40 minutes? Hey, that's Vic. speedy. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth, Vic. And they're still not finished. One final cleaning. They better clean it because you can't drive that way. Greg wants to be hitting the racetrack, ready to go, ready to see, and that's a real nice installation. Modern windshield technology at speedy. Something to think about. When we hit the racetrack, at Three Rivers. And we're on our final pace lap here at trois Rivieres as we run down the starting grid of 26 cars. And it's interesting to note here the number of names that people will see who we see in other series. There's a great deal of crossover between 1600, Enduro Series, and other forms of racing in this country. You're right. There goes the number three of uh, Greg Wilson's for that new windshield. I was going to say, the DICOM Porsche, driven by uh, uh, Stefan Veilleur, is sponsored by Peter Overing. Overing's been in motorsport for many years, a very loyal supporter and a Porsche guy. I mean, their hopes are high for this race. Bob Armstrong, always a top competitor in his Nissan. And there you see in the 11th row, the Goodland brothers, Ron Goodland and his VW, currently in second place in touring points. 25 cars to take the Green flag here at Trois-Rivières. It is tight. 
there is no escape there are walls all around that green flag drops and we have a start it's fair over the BMW and it's Spanard right behind in the corner one Stefan Bayeux will lead the BMW M5 with Spinard currently in third place through turn one now into the left hand of the call turn two and down through the duplicy arch for the first time in turn three and Lafferger got snookered by that uh, 92 Camaro which is now fourth right behind Spinard filing their way through carefully Stefan Bayer already has a margin over the BMW which is now threatened as they come down at the end of Boulevard Carmel downshifts you hear that there's something wrong you hear that squeal Lockhart doesn't drive like that something's wrong maybe the brake pedals changing he didn't get that shift right and and he's slowing down look at that and that Camaro uh, from Massachusetts moved right up as well Stuart Jones getting by so did Richard Spinar obviously some problems for the most sport winner Peter Lockhart in his BMW F5 and now we have several cars going off into the grass as they come up to complete their first lap here the hairpin now the little S before they head out and back onto the Jill Villeneuve straight here comes your leader this is the pole sitter Stefan Villeneuve 968 Porsche with a handy lead being chased by a Spinard in a 944 no way that 944 should be as competitive and look at that 92 Camaro up to third place Stuart Jones followed closely by the zero of Scott Maxwell and Lockhart is dropping back all the way back from second down to six now we're watching the action the Camaro hounded by Scott Maxwell's Mustang Veyer from the canny Spinard. Now Spinard will always look for a trick way around and he is definitely going to be threatening Bayeux pretty soon. Well you would think that Richard Spinard would know this particular circuit very well. He is from Quebec. He's raced several different Canadian series and now Spinard quickly closing on the pole sitter Bayeux. The pressure is on Bayeux and he knows that Spinard's behind him. Spinard a very aggressive very talented driver. There is no quarter given here. There's Crow two wheels off. That lets Maxwell go inside. And yes, Maxwell picks up a position. And Stewart drops down one more in that old Camaro. He's now running in fourth place. Peter Lockhart now all over the back of his bumper, currently running in fifth. And if he does have, if Lockhart does, oh, great, look at this now as they go inside some of the back markers as Stefan Veilleux tries to use some of that back traffic maybe to pull out a little bit of a lead but Spinar follows him quickly you're absolutely right but Spinar smarter than that and he found a way around that slower Honda Civic Bayeux is gradually getting his lead whittled away by Spinar there's going to be some fireworks pretty soon here. and remember in endurance racing there really is three races in one so when you see cars going by others certainly there are the faster cars of which these are as we ride along now with Richard Spinard. Closing up at the end of Boulevard Caramel, and there's Veo just brushing the wall as he pulls away. Seems to have a pretty good exit speed as they go down to the Ryan hairpin. You see the 150, 150, what are they all about? Those are braking markers that give you the number of meters back. Notice how Spinard oh, is going inside. inside. Richard Spinard, what a great move. Does he carry his speed through? He does. Richard Spinard takes over the lead from Stefan Veilleux. Veilleux inside at Ryan. Comes back across down the Villeneuve straight. He's still looking for a way by. And there's another slower class car in the way. Maybe that's the break. Veilleux goes inside. He has it. No, he doesn't. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Hold it on. Hold on. He stays on. there side by side. Goes across and inside. Tries it. Bayer had it. Vic, he gave it up. He gave now it up. Now Duplessis coming through. Look oh. at Spinard trying to close the door, and he does. There was just no more room under the Duplessis arch. The hand comes out from Richard Spinard is to say, what are you doing? Well, does he what? have a case? No way. You know, Spinard, he's just trying to unsettle Bayer, and it may work. Because if Bayer when he presented himself and just stuck his nose and kept it there he'd have taken it away Spinard was loose just before the bridge he couldn't take it away if Bayer had stayed there but 
You know, Richard, he waves his fist, makes the guy feel like a jerk. That's all right. What a great race, and we have so many to go. It's slated for 66 laps here in Paul Riviere. Interesting line there. Spinar gets two wheels off while Bayeux keeps them firmly on the pavement. But it's concrete. Spinard's taking advantage there that Bayer should be using. Spinard's using more track. He's getting faster exit speeds. Now look here. Bayer catches right up. Gets right up on his tail. Now he'll try again. He'll maybe make that move. No. Nope. Maxwell is up to third. The BMW is still hanging in. And they come out. Getting one more left turn. And there goes Bayer again. He's got it. What's the matter here? I tell you. Bay has missed two good chances. He doesn't have enough through the bridge, and it's Spinard still leading down the straightaway. That is one quick Porsche 944 down the straightaway. Now along the boulevard to Carmel. Under braking, will this be a possible spot that Bayer can grab it back from Richard Spinard? The He's left closing up. to the Rue de Cologne. He's he closed up quite a bit there, Vic. The battle is on. My money's on nine, the 968 Porsche of Bayer. He's got a chance. In behind, you see Scott Maxwell in the blue zero. That's the 94 Mustang. Now comes the BMW M5 of Peter Lockhart. But up front, it is all Porsche, one and two. Bayer closing up under braking. As they go through the hairpin. Oh, so wide. No, no, no. Bayer is not making the sort of driving that we need for him to get by Spinard. But he's close again as they go down the short Villeneuve straight across the stripe. And he goes inside. On board with Richard Spinard heading into turn one there. Stefan Bayou. Oh, he couldn't hold the line, couldn't hold it. And he'll take the exit road. Bayou gets into the dirt. He can't slow down. And all Spinard has to do is wait and drive off. That's the end of that. Richard Spinard now comfortably in front. But really, you have to question. Stefan Bayeux and the move he made there. As we look back now to our leader in sports class and right along with Jocelyn Hebert, currently second in point standings behind Benoit Tige. But in this race, he is your leader after starting 10th overall, the fastest in sport class. Meanwhile, we jump to the touring leader, and that is Robert Boyer, who started 15th overall, and we're riding in his Nissan NX 2000. So three races in one here round the Hippodrome, the horse racing track in Trois-Rivières. But there is your leader looking for his second win after he won at the Molson Toronto Indy, Richard Spinard. Back to Trois Rivières. Vic Rotor along with John Powell as we watch the battle for second and third in Grand Sport. The zero of Scott Maxwell, the Ford Mustang. The BMW M5, Peter Lockhart, he started on the front row beside Richard Spinard. We thought he might have brake problems early. He fell back to fifth. Now he's battling for second. Could he have done something as he actually goes into second place now? Could have you fixed those problems? I I don't think so, but I'm beginning to think that maybe he didn't have brake trouble because he's doing all right as they go under the arch. There must be something else mechanically wrong with that car that causes it not to perform and then come back, and I don't know what it is. Lockhart's very good at adapting to whatever the car condition is, so he's probably adapted his driving style to suit whatever malady that uh, Beach BMW has, and he's figured his way around it. It's a beautiful car. We've watched it for a couple of years now. This BMW M5 winner at Mosport in race one. Peter Lockhart will eventually give it up to his co-driver, Nick Moran, while Scott Maxwell, he slated to go the entire distance. Well, there's nothing wrong with Lockhart right now as he pulls away, passing some slower cars. Maxwell cannot even remain in contact. And way back, we see the 92-1992 Camaro has dropped off the pace Jeff Lapjevic has passed it, and uh, we're back to the Mustang. Interesting, a little bit of smoke coming out of the back of that uh, Mustang of Scott Maxwell. Maybe a problem we'll look for in an endurance race such as this. And man, he has really fallen back. It's a curious race because you can overdrive the car bit. Very, very tight circuit, very, very hot day, 
and you can drive beyond the performance limits of the car. All right, there is your leader. That is Richard Spinar with his comfortable lead. Now, does she take something off? Absolutely. You know, Spinar's cherry picking here. He does all the big races. He says he likes them. Well, of course, got to win in front of the crowd. But that 944 Porsche, you got to say, is indecently fast. And indecently fast right here as he puts the lap on one of the touring cars. That's the 91 Honda CRX of Sylvain and Eric Laporte of Laval and Rosemary Quebec. And as a driver in a race like this, you have to be so conscious of those other cars. You have to pace yourself and you have to play the traffic, but it's always easier to do it when you're alone. Now this two Camaros, a Firebird and Jocelyn Hebert in the Talon are having a great fight and they're not pacing themselves. They're just going hard at it. And Ebert in a lower class of car, because this track is so tight, is able to stay with these guys, not on the straightaways, but in the corners. So we've got a great battle going on here. We're riding along with Jocelyn Bear. He is the leader in sports class in his Eagle. Up ahead, Peter Cohen, Bruce Petroff, Paul Duckworth, and Wise now with this Eagle in a lower class be able to keep up with these fellows. Well, yeah, first of all, number two, Duckworth here, sure giving him a, a whole bunch of help because he's missing the apexes every second corner. A Bear is able to get around with a lighter car, get around these tight corners faster. And don't forget, because he's less weight, less mass, the brakes are better able to handle it. Through turn one, now watch him come up close to the wall. Nothing there, nothing there. And you're right, it's funny how the lines are so different. Shouldn't be, but for some reason, maybe there's something wrong with Douglas car. Old A Bear is just doing a better job. Now, a little bit of a traffic jam as they come on to Boulevard de Carmel. Around the slower car, first it's Cohen, then Petrov in the Firebird, and then Duckworth, and there's Hebert just hanging on. As they go by the 92 Honda Civic of Réjean Vincent in touring. And at the end of Boulevard Carmel, they all close up, and quickly we're on board with Peter Lockhart, and it's this car sounds pretty sick. Well, we wondered, yeah, we wondered earlier what the problem, we thought it was brake, but this doesn't sound like brakes. Now, when he backs off the gas, there's something really growling there. My guess is it's something to do with the driveline. And there is Stefan Bayer in the Dicom Express. Well, remember, he started on the pole position, then made the mistake, and now he has moved back up into second place, but way up in front is the leader, of course, Richard Spinar. But you gotta give uh, Veo credit. He went off up the escape road, backed up, started up again, and up to second place already. Up to second place ahead of Scott Maxwell. That is it for Peter Lockhart, as they have put the car on the jacks, and they are going looking for some serious problems. Peter Lockhart was right. He said it was tough. It was tough on his car, and he's out of the race. Stefan Veo in second place after running down the escape road and using all the brakes he had. And ironically, that is our iTech, high tech report. We're going to look at brakes and how difficult it is on those brakes when you run a circuit such as Trois Rivières. Hi, I'm Andre Gaudet. I'd like to explain to you why a Porsche is so efficient with brakes at a track like Three Rivers or Il Notre Dame, which is very demanding for brakes. Here I have in my left hand this, of uh, a 968, which is 32 millimeter thick and 12, 12 and a half inch in diameter. Also, I have in here a brake pad. As you can see, the, the enormous size of that pad. And uh, also, if you look on the car, we'll show you that there's extra cooling like you have none on, the, on any other car. The cooling on this is, I mean, bring a lot of air and can cool the brake. One factor very important is this car is only 2,900 pounds and it's got a perfect balance, meaning the four wheels are exactly the same weight. So that's why it's so, it, the brake is so efficient on this car. You compare that to a BMW M5, which is roughly around 3,700 pounds. They have to carry a lot of weight. And a track like Three Rivers, it's very demanding. And somehow at the end of the, of the race, it could make a big difference. Okay, now let me show you what it looks like when it's all put together in the car. Here you can see the huge size gallopers made by Brembo for Porsche. And you can see the size of the disc and the pad installed. 
And in the front, you could see the, uh, the, the two extremely big entry for air right from the ground that the air is catching for cooling goes right to the disc. And uh, it's uh, extremely important to cool the brakes. Otherwise, if you start boiling the brakes, it could make the difference between winning or finishing second position. And right now we have Porsches running first and second, but a driver can help his brakes also by the way he shifts the car on a circuit like this, can he? Well, yes, you, you want to use some engine braking. You don't want to brake the drivetrain. But if we look at this uh, interesting driving technique, you want to keep your hand off the shift lever as much as possible. Just use the shift lever and then back up to the steering wheel. He tends not to do that, uh, Stefan Bayeux, which is probably why he's second. Scott Maxwell is into the pits on lap 25. That'll drop him from third to 11th. He was going the whole way, and something's gone wrong, but they do have one compulsory pit stop for 60 seconds under the green as we watch Richard Spinard leading handily in his Porsche 944. And so far, he hasn't come in. Goodness, hold on, Richard. And there goes Maxwell out into the fray again. 60 seconds is up, I guess, and he's back out. You know, thinking back to these brakes, the Porsche 960 certainly has an advantage with very large mass rotors. The more mass you have in the brake, the more heat you can dissipate. It amazes me that the 944 goes just as fast as it does because it does have smaller brakes. Meanwhile, in touring class, coming out of pit lane is the Nissan NX2000 of the Boyer brothers, and this is Normand now behind the wheel and leading in touring as we go back to the second place, Stéphane Veilleux. And Veilleux's catching up to a group here, which includes uh, Jocelyn Hebert and in the Eagle Talon, and of course the uh, Camaro group, the Camaro and Firebirds, having a great battle. Oh, 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 my goodness, he hangs it out as it gets a little loose. It's a hot day, and that way you're going to overheat the tires, and he'll have to drive a little bit slower to bring those tires back. How much of a problem is running from asphalt to the concrete like we see right there and then back on again? Uh, it's difficult. The concrete offers a little more grip. The asphalt offers less. And there we get a look at Stefan Veilleux. Got it loose, the back end fishtailed, but he was able to bring it back under control. The biggest problem there is he's overheating his tires and he's gonna cost him in time. That Dinan Porsche of Richard Spinard isn't costing anything though. He's really got a huge margin. It's gonna be very, very tough. The only way Richard could lose this race is if he loses it himself. And it's not uncommon for drivers to lose it themselves and make the mistake. Sometimes you wonder if you're more apt to make a mistake when you have no pressure than when you really have to fully concentrate. You're absolutely right. But I don't think Richard's going to make any mistakes today. We ride along with the leader in sports class. This is Jocelyn Bear, the Eagle Talon, and up ahead, of course, is Stefan Bay. Interesting now, the comparison between these two cars and exit speeds, speeds in the straight, as we see a bear coming into pit lane for his mandatory 60 second stop now this is a routine spot stop and it's very interesting Vic, because they're going to stop and wait for 60 seconds if you wanted to screw your brakes up you'd stop in pit lane and wait 60 seconds and just let those brakes boil he's going to have to be careful leaving the pits and there in that red and white firebird is our good friend terry mcdonald cadu she's now in third place Vic. Terry McDonald and her Firebird teams with Rolf von Engelbrechten in their car, this Firebird. And when she's not racing, of course, she is one of the IndyCar pace car drivers. Those beautiful cars you see at every IndyCar event in Toronto and Vancouver, she's one of the drivers. Now we ride along with Greg Wilkins in his 93 Chevrolet out of Markham, Ontario. What has he got, a shift light? That's right, that's right. I only remember seeing those on old VWs. <laughs> Useful help. Greg's doing a pretty decent job here, working his way up, and he's shadowing Stefan Bayeux. And not far behind him is Petrov in the uh, number four Firebird. It's an interesting thing about endurance racing, isn't it? I mean, it isn't conventional in as much as 
when you have all these pit stops, fields change, leaders take over, it can really be quite the event. I mean, you'll get to the end of 66 laps. As now coming in is Benoit Thiege. He is, of course, the leader in sports after four races, but Jocelyn Hebert right now is the leader of the race, so he could fall back here if he doesn't pick it up a bit. And notice he's sitting in the pits for 60 seconds with his foot on the brake. Really should take his foot off the brake pedal, because if you leave your foot on the brake, you just create a heat sink and you can cause brake failure. As you leave the pits, they'll pump the brake pedal up again to make sure they've got a pedal when they leave. Very Benoit, hot day. Benoit Peach in a 94 Honda Prelude SRV. And here's Paul Duckworth in number two, followed closely by number four, the Petrov Goodwrench Firebird having a great race. And there comes Maxwell trying to move up. Petrov down there stopped there, and Maxwell's trying to get back behind that slower car, working his way after a pit stop, which of course was a routine pit stop for Maxwell dropped into 11th space, and now he's working his way back up the field. So Duckworth, Petrov, and there goes Maxwell, and look right behind him is that 66 Camaro. And coming out of pit lane, Benoit Tiege in that 94 Honda Prelude. And he appeared to be in pit lane a lot longer than was uh, 60 seconds. Yeah, it seems to be that way, but you know, 60 seconds stop, you gotta slow down, come in pit lane, got to get going again, so it's a costly stop. Your leader, though, without a doubt, Rishar Spinar here in round five of the Magna Enduro Series on TSN. Yep, Richard Spinar, you've got to call him Cherry Picker. Here he is running the Three Rivers race. He's running away with it. The crowd in trois Rivière probably delighted, and Stefan Veilleux, a tough break for him. So after 29 of a scheduled 66 laps, Richard Spinar is your leader in Grand Sport. It is Jocelyn Hebert in sport. It's the Boyer brothers in touring. Welcome back to Trois Rivières TSN's coverage, round five, the Magnet Enduro Series. From the Hippodrome at Trois Rivières, as we ride along with the race leader in Grand Sport, Richard Spinar, and he has a comfortable lead. Second place, Stefan Bayeux. At this point, Bayeux, all he can do is really just hope for some kind of a break. A shame for Stefan because he really looked pretty good at the beginning, but he made some miscues under pressure of the Richard Spinard, went up the escape road, had to back up, rejoin the race. A costly mistake. And Spinard now leads comfortably. And you know, sometimes I think drivers forget you can't take the race racer out. He always wants to go forward, but an endurance race. He didn't necessarily have to do it then. He had to pace himself, and he didn't. We're in the pits with Terry McDonald Kedju out of the car. She gets out. Rolf Van Engelbrecken will go in, take over, the co-driver of that team. And right behind them, we have the uh, car of uh, Greg, Greg Wilkins. Wilkins. Kenny Wilden will move in here. They're doing their change, a slow change. This is NASCAR, doing the best they can. Now these driver changes as well often require more than the needed 60 seconds. So that's why I think sometimes you'll see drivers go it alone, no? Uh-huh, Vic. But you know, they shouldn't take more than 60 seconds to drop that load of fuel. Just try put the wheel back off. Now what is Kenny Wilton? Well, there. I, I think he recognizes that he's got a 60 second window. You don't need to fill the car up because it's not uh, sufficient to have to fill the whole thing up. He wants the wheel back on and let's go. He can't afford to lose the race in the pits. He probably did. Now, meanwhile, here is your leader, Richard Spinar, signaling. The left arm comes out. Would he be signaling down to the pit? I'm coming. Yeah, Radio Spinar says, hey guys, I'm coming in. <laughs> Forget the radio, let them know I'm coming in. Our leaders, our leader in our second place car have not pitted so far. And this is gonna be interesting strategy here. Will Veu follow him in and pace himself that way? Or will he take a moment of glory and try and stay out there? Because you're going to figure the 60 second window in the pitch, Vic, 
but it takes longer to slow down, come in the pits, and uh, as you pointed out earlier, it's a slow exit onto the racetrack. One thing to note about pit lane here at Trois Rivières, it is not straight. It is, it has a bend to it. It has a right hand bend, and so depending where you are on pit lane, it's a slower exit. Well, that's, that's right. Up. You just can't sprint down the pit lane and carry the speed because you've got a right turn right after you. Here is the second place car. Stefan Veilleux coming up on the number 67. This is David Thorndike from Oshawa, Ontario, and his 93 Trans Am. Veilleux is by him pretty comfortably inside. But not that comfortably. Yeah. And here comes uh, Richard. All right, Spinard. Now he is down towards the exit end. You see him make the little right-hander now. The clock will go on starting now. 60 seconds, and there's his crew chief. They're pretty relaxed, but notice also his brake lights went out. Richard's savvy enough to take his foot off the brake pedal when he stopped at the pits so he doesn't heat sink those brakes. So here's your question and answer. You wondered if Veilleux would, in fact, come in and keep pace that way. No, he's going to try and put some distance between himself and Spinard this way. Yeah, this is, this is a strategy that probably won't work for him. Better, the, better to come in and keep him in sight. But by the same token, by the time he gets in, I mean, he, sure, he could see him. He might just see him leave the pits, though. Well, let's see who wins. There goes Richard Spinar. His 60-second stop, mandatory, is up, and now he takes up the chase and for the first time is running in second place. But Donald Cadieu is also in front, so I guess unless he put McDonald Cadieu a lap down, he may well be back further than that. And re remember now it's Rolf van Engelbrecken driving that Cadieu Firebird. But there is your leader, Stefan Veilleux. Did he put enough distance in now? Remember, he still has to stop. Well, he's got a great car, and as you saw earlier, massive brakes on that 968. There's no way a 968 and 944 should be equivalent to any stretch of the imagination. So uh, my guess is that bayo has got a chance, but he's going to have to drive it hard, and he's got to keep it together. And that's the magic of driving at Three Rivers, because, as I said earlier, you can overdrive the car. Now, when you say a 968 shouldn't be, these two Porsches should not be equal, where's the difference? Well, the 968 has more power, it has bigger brakes, I mean, it's a, it's a newer model of car, but maybe the difference is uh, Richard Spinner. And just his knowledge, particularly of this track, do you think? Well, knowledge and a good car, and uh, they've obviously got it for this very well, and you can't argue with this. A yellow flag as they slow down, coming out as a car stopped on the racetrack. Now we ride along with the leader in sports class. This is Jocelyn A. Bear. Having a great dice with Maxwell. He's been doing this all race long, racing with the early, the, the, the cars ahead of him in, in, a, in a superior class, yeah, but taking something. advantage of his uh, lighter car with... Uh, something doesn't sound right here, does it? As we go back now... Well, he's is, in the lead. Yeah, he's in his lead in class, but something doesn't sound right. This is Richard Spinar currently in second place, trying to chase down Stefan Veilleux. There he is, the leader still hasn't pitted, though. Now he's coming in. Ah, here he comes. Now, did the strategy pay off? Now watch where he is. He'll come in right here. Now watch for his crew chief. We met him earlier, Andre Godet. Here's Andre. Crew checks tires for wear, for dirt, for cuts. And while they watch their watch, we'll keep an eye on and look back down the track for Richard Spinar. Boy, this seems like an awfully long 60 seconds, and here comes Richard Spinar. And there goes Richard Spinar back into the lead. So it hasn't paid off for Stefan Veilleux. Well, you're not going to gobble up that amount of time, particularly when the pit spot stops at time. Oh, Stefan Veilleux. Having difficulty maybe getting it into gear. Problems for crew chief Andre Godet. Sounds like he started in third gear. Let's go down to Michelle Craig, find out if there's any problems with Stefan Veilleux. 
Is there a problem with the transmission? Yes, there's a problem with transmission. I don't know if it's going to last. I hope so. Uh, it seems to be get, getting stuck in second gear. That interesting. So there you go. So he started in third. And in the meantime, there goes King Richard looking for a way through the traffic, but really a tremendous margin. Now, they obviously don't have radios, but they're using hand signals, so they can't tell Richard to cool it because Stefan's got transmission trouble. But it looks like uh, all he has to do is stay alive and uh, win the race. Your leader now is number 33 in touring. That is Bob Armstrong as the Boye brothers came into pit lane and have given up the lead to Armstrong from North Gower, Ontario in his 91 Nissan NX2000. Not far behind him, Vic, is my favorite 1992 Camaro, number 69, driven by John Heinrichsy now, making up some ground. Armstrong in his Nissan is the touring points leader after four events ahead of Ron Gittelin and his VW. 1992 Camaro is doing a heck of a job. Considering the age of the car, is that it? Well, yeah, it's an older car, but you know, John Heinrichsy has a record of many, many years of driving Corvettes for uh, the Morrison uh, uh, team in uh, 24 hours. Oh, we have problems right here. This is the number 89. That's Jocelyn A. Bear, your leader in sports class, and he looks like he's burning him up. Well, it looks like he's out of brake pads. And there's an example. He's out of brakes now because he was spending too much time dicing with those larger cars, having fun, not conserving his automobile. And if you hear it, you were right earlier, you referred to that. It's metal to metal. I mean, he's got nothing left. He, this guy is looking for a wall to hit. Down into turn one and through. Well, he's using the engine uh, as he downshifts to slow it down. He can't accelerate as much anymore. And the pedal, he's pumping it up. But I mean, once you drive the fat material out, now you're metal to metal, you'll push the pistons right out of the calipers eventually. Uh, that's brake fluid coming out there, I guess. Eventually, he's going to have no brake fluid, no brakes at all, unless he uses the handbrake. Meanwhile, no problems for your leader. That is Richard Spinar. And looking back, here comes the second place car, Stefan Bayeux, making his way nicely around. Some slower cars in other classes through turn one. He's made up some ground on Spinard, but probably because Spinard is pacing himself, not that he's uh, so competitive anymore, if he's uh, not using second gear. Back on board with your leader in sports class, Jocelyn A. Bear. We know he has brake problems. Boy, do we ever know he has brake problems. Looking for something to hit, and he hits the tires. And well, that is it for Jocelyn A. Bear. It happened, Vic. The pad material was over, the metal went into the caliper, he went the pistons out of the caliper, all the brake fluid's gone, no brakes, and it's over. And taking over the lead then in sports class is Benoit Tij in a 94 Honda Prelude. And Benoit Tij is the leader after four races in the championship, and there is a disappointed Jocelyn Hebert. Bayer still, he's within striking distance, he can see Spinard, but uh, there's no way. There's the number 16. That is your new leader in sports. Benoit Tij just ahead of Stefan Bayeux as it is Jocelyn Aver tossing his helmet in through the open window. Back with our leader in grand sports. That is Richard Spinard. Last lap sign is out, and there's no way that uh, Bayeux is going to make a difference. You can see he's even stuck behind uh, Tij at this point. Yeah, in fact, if he's missing a second gear, he's probably nursing this thing home now. Absolutely, he's got him finished. Second place, still valuable points. And if Spinard isn't doing all these races, he's not in the championship. So is playing uh, the best game he can with what he's got left. And remember, after four races coming into Trois-Rivières, Stefan Veilleux was the leader in the championship ahead of Von Engelbrechten and Terry mcdonald Cadieu. So second place would still keep him in the lead in terms of the championship but looking now for his second win after he won in Toronto is Richard Spinard a very well judged win for Richard Spinard the last turn onto the Gilles Villeneuve straightaway and to the stripe and I guess you gotta say Spinard won this one looking for the checkered flag raises the hand in acknowledgement 
Richard Spinard is your winner here in Trois-Rivières. And nursing home a car without a second gear, your points leader, Stefan Veilleux. And boy, nursing it home and limping it across the line is Veilleux. He just made it good for him, a tough race for Veilleux, but he just managed to have enough car, and across the stripe he goes. And I'm sure the Daikon crew are uh, relieved. And he may just shut it down right there. The Magna Enduro Series on TSN has been brought to you by Prestone. More than just an antifreeze. By Mini Disc from Sony, the smaller recordable compact disc. And by Speedy Auto Glass. Over 160 locations across Canada at Speedy, we care. And congratulations to the BMW team of Peter Lockhart and Nick Moran. Unlucky here at Trois-Rivières, but they were still lucky as they've won two tickets to any of 150 cities served by Canadian Airlines International. Thanks, Thanks Canadian. Canadian. We're, we're going to go to San LA. Francisco. LA. San Francisco. Canadian Airlines International, proud sponsor of the Magna Enduro Series, serving 150 destinations across five continents. For the second time this season, the crew of Richard Spenard can celebrate a win, first Toronto, and now here in Trois-Rivières. Richard Spenard wins comfortably over Stéphane Veilleux. Never challenged, really. Scott Maxwell, third. The Invader, Stuart Jones from Massachusetts, fourth. Well, it was exciting. Uh, you know, racing in Toronto Vier is always fun. There's so many people in the grandstand, which is sometimes, uh, you know, we don't see as many people. But um, the first six laps were very exciting because I had a good battle with Peter Lockhart and Stéphane Veilleux. And finally, um, Stéphane got kind of lured into a, a very slippery situation and basically missed corner one, and I kept going. And, from that point, it was a fairly easy race for me because we built up a 15-second lead, and it shrunk at the end, but it was really pacing myself to finish the race and then do it fine. However, the second place finish by Veilleux keeps him still 52 points ahead of Rolf van Engelbrecken in the overall Grand Sport Championship standings. Meanwhile, in sports class, Benoit Tige in his 94 Honda Prelude took advantage of some burned up brakes of Jocelyn A. Bear to win here in Trois-Rivières. And the win certainly will keep Tiege ahead of A. Bear in the championship standings. The, the first 15 minutes we were uh, able to catch uh, A. Bear who was, uh, I think, four or five car uh, behind us on uh, qualifying time. And uh, we were able to catch him and uh, just before uh, the pit stop, uh, I passed him on the back back stretch down there. And this is how it ended for Jocelyn A. Bear, his 95 Eagle Talon, using up all his brakes, finally needing the tire wall at the end of the Boulevard du Carmel to stop. So Benoit Tige wins his fourth race in five and stretches his lead in the overall championship. Meanwhile, in touring, Bob Armstrong, after winning in Toronto and Mont Tremblant, adds a win here at Trois Rivières for his third of the season. Bob Armstrong from North Gower, Ontario, in his 91 Nissan NX2000, is your winner ahead of Des Hockley. And Armstrong, who came into this race at Trois Rivières, leading by 10 points over Ron Goodland stretches his lead on top of the championship standings now to 25 over Gidlin from Brampton, Ontario. Congratulations to all our winners here in Trois-Rivières. Now on behalf of John Powell and our entire crew, I'm Vic Roder. Thanks for joining us. Till we talk with you again, goodbye from Trois-Rivières.